Good evening. I'm Carmelita Ong, your commentator for tonight. Today's reading teach us that just as there are physical laws that govern the universe, there are also spiritual laws that govern our spiritual life. And one law that Jesus emphasizes in today's gospel is the law on forgiveness. If we want God to forgive us, he teaches us that we must also forgive one another. The palmist today captures the heart and character of God when he reminds us that the Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. And it is to this God whom we approach today in prayer and gratitude. The presider of this month is Father Emmanuel Adams. Let us stand and begin. Our opening song is number 539. Give us your peace, 539. We begin this Holy Mass in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening, everyone. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our hearts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay, and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant, and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He pardons all your iniquities and heals all your ills, redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is far from the west, so far he has put our transgressions from us. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, 
whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. This is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, his master a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did homage, and said, Be patient with me and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When the servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had a fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servant saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers, until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Every human person has emotions. And emotion is the mental state that comes up in every human person in response to 
things that happen around you. And we describe our emotions using the word feelings. So for example, when I see something that makes me happy, happiness is an emotion, I describe it as, oh, I feel happy. When I see something that makes me sad, I describe it as, I feel sad. When I have an emotion like anger, I describe it as, I am angry. So we all have emotions. And anger is one of our emotions. And it's natural. So to feel angry is not a sin in itself. No, it's not. It's a natural human emotion in response to certain situations. For example, when our Lord Jesus went into the temple in the Gospel of St. John chapter 2, and he saw the people doing buying and selling in the house of God, what did he do? He made a whip, and he drove the people out, and he turned the tables of the money changers over. So anger is a normal human emotion. But St. Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, that anger, even when we feel angry, it should not lead us to sin. And the sun must not go down on our anger. So when I feel angry as a person, it's normal. But the anger must not lead me to sin. One of the very common sin that anger leads to is unforgiveness. When I'm, angry at some, when I'm angry with someone because of something they have done, because of something they have done that has hurt me deeply, one of the consequences of such an anger will be not forgiving the person. Because every time I see you, every time I see the person, I remember the hurt they, he or she has caused me. Thereby, I hold out forgiveness. So an unforgiving spirit is very often a consequence of anger. And that is why if you go back to what happened between Cain and Abel in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, Cain made an offering to God, Abel made an offering to God, and the Lord accepted the offering of Abel but rejected the offering of Cain. And Cain became angry with his brother, and the Lord told him, do not let that anger consume you. And what happened after the Lord warned Cain? Cain told his brother, let us go out into the field. They went into the field and he killed his brother out of anger. That's the first record of anger we have in the Bible. He failed to forgive, to let go that his brother's sacrifice was accepted and his was rejected. So today, as we are all here, we are reminded in our readings that not to forgive one another, it's a sin against charity. It's a sin against love. Because when you fail to forgive someone, you are withholding your love from that person. And you are withholding that love because you have some level of anger or you feel some level of hurt deep within you that the person has caused you. I make no joke out of forgiveness. Sometimes it's going to be very hard to forgive. I recognize that, but it is not impossible. To err is human. To forgive is divine. And to forgive is not an option, it is an imperative for us as Christians. So we do not have the choice to say, okay, I choose not to forgive if you truly want to be a Christian. It is a must. We must forgive. Because it is an intrinsic element of our Christian identity. 
It's something we repeat every time we say the Our Father. So if we want God to continue to forgive us, we also must learn to forgive. And one of the first steps of learning to forgive is to let go of that anger that is at the root of that unforgiveness. So as we are all here today, you might want to ask yourself, and only you can probably answer this question deep down within you, is there anyone I am angry with at this moment? Someone in your family, someone in your place of work, someone amongst your friends, someone in this community of faith. Is there anyone you're angry with at this moment? If the answer is yes, you now ask yourself, is your anger leading you to sin, the sin of unforgiveness? If you also answer in the affirmative, which is a yes, then you begin to ask yourself, how can I unburden my soul from this yoke of anger and from this spirit, this unforgiving spirit? One of the first steps is pray for that person. And that's what St. Matthew tells us. Pray for your enemies. Pray for those who don't like you. Pray for those who have hurt you. That's the first step. Forgiveness may not happen like at once. It might be a process for some people. Pray for the person. Pray to God to give you the grace to be able to forgive the person. Then take concrete steps towards forgiving the person. If it's someone you've not spoken to in ages, you might want to begin to consider how you want to break that yoke of malice that has arisen as a result of the unforgiving spirit. But we are reminded today very strongly, not to forgive is very unchristian. Withholding forgiveness means withholding love to that person. And to withhold love, not to show love, is a sin against charity. So today, let us pray to God to give us the grace and the courage to be able to begin the process of forgiveness if there are people we need to forgive. It might take a week, it might take a year, it might take years to get to that final point to say, yes, I've totally let go. But let us begin that process with God. It may be difficult, but it is not impossible. Another level of forgiveness is forgiveness of self. Some people might be angry with themselves, unable to forgive themselves for certain mistakes they've made in their lives. You must learn, I must also learn to forgive myself, to show myself some love. May God give us the grace to be able to forgive ourselves and to be able to forgive others through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. 
he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Loving God, our Father, mindful of the mercy we have received, we ask your mercy on all the peoples of the world as we now pray. For the church, that she be a beacon of reconciliation, leading others in the ways of harmony and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the leaders of nations locked in disagreements, that they find ways to break their ancient bond of hatred and seek healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those people burdened by the weight of resentments, that they experience solace through their exercise of compassion and forgiveness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering as a result of extreme environmental events, especially the fires in Maui and the floods in Libya, that their lives be made whole, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill, especially Mary Calica, Emilia Austria, and Charlie Cunningham, that they find peace in the knowledge of God's mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Joyce Corsia, that God bring them into his loving and forgiving heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This mass is being offered for the intentions of Betty Nascimento and for the repose of the souls of John and Marion Fox. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In union with the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, let us say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Almighty God, we acknowledge that we are your servants and rely on you for everything. And so we bring our needs to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift to pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Salvatore our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Our communion sing song is number 330, Ang Katawan ni Cristo. Number 330, Ang Katawan ni Cristo. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements. Our second collection this Sunday is for the church, property, and liability insurance. Our insurance increased 13.5% last year, totaling now over $143,000 per year, which is equivalent to over $2,700 per week. So know that your donation to this special collection is very much appreciated. Assers, you may now take up the collection. Just as school has started, our religious education program will also be starting on Sunday, October 1st. If you haven't registered yet, please take a moment to sign out at the table and the vestibule. Similarly, we also have a program for adults wishing to learn more about the Catholic faith or to grow deeper in it. Please stop by, by the vestibule to sign up for the class or for any information. Lastly, the Paris Knights of Columbus is sponsoring a party night. It's a celebration to mark the end of summer with drinks, food, and karaoke. Complimentary child care is offered. So great for couples to spend a little together. It will be held on Saturday, September 23rd from 6 to 10 p.m. in the school's cafeteria with the child care taking place in the school library. See the table in the vestibule for more information or scan the QR code on the flyer at our entrances. The author of the book of Ecclesiastes says there is time for everything, a time to begin and a time to end. About a year ago, I started my pastoral ministry here at this parish sometime in August last year. And the time has also come now for me to end my pastoral ministry here and move on to another pastoral engagement. With this, I wish to inform us that I will be leaving St. Anne's Parish on the 2nd of October, that's next month. It's been a great spiritual experience for me to work and to serve this community as a priest. I invite us to stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Please join us in the closing song of number 390, City of God. Three nine zero, city.